Whew. That was ugly. The Dallas Mavericks escaped with a 107-106 victory against the Orlando Magic. And while I am happy for the most part, they almost... I have torn feelings on the end, right? Dallas's issues in the fourth quarter free throw shooting department definitely remained. You had Seth Curry, of all people, guy that shoots about 90% at the line, go to the line with a chance to make it a three-point game with seven seconds left. And he misses not only his first free throw of the year, but the second one as well. Orlando, man, they, they had their chances. They they absolutely had their chances. They rack up two offensive fouls. In fact, both are Aaron Gordon. He fouls out because of it. Two offensive fouls in the final 34 seconds. The first one, a little iffy to me. The second one, zero question. Zero question at all. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking. They had a timeout. Anytime he's driving, just anytime you put your forearm out there and extend it at all and the defender goes down, the referee's going to make that call. So that's that's what it is, man. But it feels like Dallas got seriously, seriously lucky in this game because they started very slow. Their, offense, their offensive efficiency wasn't great, but they got enough of a spark off the bench that they were able to overcome it. In the first quarter, my man, Justin Jackson, gets going, scores nine points in the first quarter, grabs four boards. He's barely played the past two or three games, and I've been sitting here wondering, what is it going to take, not just to start him like I've pushed for, but what is it going to take to actually get this man some minutes? Now, to be fair, as I'm talking about wanting to start Justin Jackson, Dorian Finney-Smith had himself a very, very fine performance. Not so much in the points department, although he did hit a big three in the in the waning minutes of the game. He he just was rebounding everything. He was getting steals. He was just making himself a force. He was playing good defense as well. Not a whole lot more you can ask for out of Dorian Finney-Smith than that. But this, this game, I felt like Dallas was sloppy offensively through the first part. Dallas came in with the... Best offense in the league in terms of points per 100 possessions at 113, number one in the league. Defensively, they were 19th in the league, however, entering the game. And because of that, Carlisle said, hey, the whole week we're basically going to focus solely on the defense. And maybe that contributed a little bit to the offense being sluggish. I mean, I don't want to say solely on the defense, but that was the central focus for this week. This was not a pretty game by the Mavericks. Offense started slow. Like I said, Jackson was uh, a burst off the bench. Dallas trailed after the first quarter, 28-25. Actually had a chance to knock down a three at the buzzer. I think it might have been Jackson who got the shot, too, that would have put them at uh, all knotted up despite a very slow start, falling behind by, I think, 12 in the first quarter. Then you have the season debut of J.J. Barea. Barea, man, he came in and he was just a ball of energy. It was very vintage J.J. Barea. You have three possessions in a row that he just splashes a three. Splashes a three, then he takes it off the dribble, then he spots up again. Three threes, boom, boom, boom. Barea had at one point, I think it was like 14 minutes, 11 points, four assists. I mean, Barea had himself a really, three assists, excuse me, a really impressive 14-minute run in this game, and most of that came. He actually started the second half as well. Carlisle liked so much what he got out of him, but they cut him off at about 14 minutes. I think that was wise for his season debut. But, man, it was good to see him for the first time since January 11, 2019. Uh, good job for Berea. Him and, as I mentioned earlier, Justin Jackson really are what kept Dallas in this game early on when I felt like they didn't have a whole lot of business being in this game. Now, Luka eventually did Luka Doncic things. In fact, I'm curious here. I might be slightly off on his stats up there as I look at it now. Uh, Luka's stats, no, 27-7-7. I got it right. So Luka Doncic ended up having himself. It ended up looking like a very prototypical game for him by the end. He didn't shoot great percentages throughout the game. But at the same time, when you needed him in the late third quarter, when Dallas was trailing by 11 points, Dallas put together a 26-8 run that was really spearheaded by Luka. Yeah, 10 of 21 from the field for Luka, only 1 of 7 on threes, 6 of 7 at the line, 6 turnovers. Not a great game 
in that regard for Luka compared to what we've seen recently. But when you needed it in the late third quarter, Luka helped engineer a 26-8 run that turned an 11-point deficit into a 7-point lead going into the fourth quarter. And that was huge. That was huge. I mean, Dallas trailed by two at half. It just felt like it felt like a game that Orlando was controlling. Dallas was sloppy, a lot of bad turnovers. KP had another struggle game, uh, 10 points, 8 boards for him. I don't know if KP had any blocks in the game, actually. Let me take a look at that now. Uh, KP, no, no blocks in the game. He was a minus 3 overall. KP only 4 of 14, 1 of 5 on threes, 1 of 2 at the line. Man, Jonathan Isaac pretty much ate KP's lunch in this game. Jonathan Isaac, 13 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, 6 blocks, and 4 steals. Holy crap did that dude feel the stat sheet. Shout out to Rangers King uh, Max Levy as well. He has been very high on the prospect of adding Jonathan Isaac for the past couple years. And uh, I see it. I get it. I totally get it now. Jonathan Isaac would be a fantastic addition. I just don't know how plausible that is. I'd have to look into it. But considering the fact that I'm jumping into this stream or this rather recording right after the game, haven't had a chance to do that yet. But uh, yeah, I I believe that hype. Jonathan Isaac can absolutely uh, give fits defensively and contribute in a lot of areas. So I like that a lot. Now uh, for the Mavericks here, we already talked about Bray. We talked about Justin Jackson, Luca, and KP. KP had some nice shots in this game. He, you know, he contributed. Uh, I, again, I like that he, even in games where his shots not going, he's still finding ways to contribute. He's rebounding well, and that that means a lot. I mean, it's the best rebounding performance thus far of his career in terms of his average. Granted, it's only seven games, but I digress. Dallas is able to move at this point to five and two on the season, and this is. This is the precursor, right? This kind of felt like the trap game because Orlando came in as the 30th rated offense per 100 possessions. Dallas came in as the number one. Uh, You had the um, Soldier's Night thing there at the AAC as well. And it just felt like with the Knicks game, which for KP's sake is circled on the calendar, no doubt, that's Friday. It felt like a trap game. And for about two quarters, Dallas really, two and a half quarters really, Dallas really played around with it kind of like that's exactly what it was. Like they were falling into that trap. Thankfully, they were able to make adjustments and get out of that. Uh, Dallas in the first half, man, there there are still issues here, to be clear. Orlando shoots basically 49% from the field compared to 43% for Dallas. In the first half alone, I don't know what they wound up with for the game, but for the first half alone, oh, no, wait, 58 points in the game for Orlando in the paint. They had 38 at half. So Dallas slowed him down a little bit, but not a ton. Dallas, 42 points in the paint. Assists, they were out-assisted 24-19. Dallas was blocked shots. Oh my God, Orlando dominated that 9-1. 13 steals compared to 3. So Dallas got demolished in the shot blocked, in the block shots and the uh, steals category. They were outshot from the field. They had... Same turnovers, actually, 16 apiece, and that helped them. Like I said, Orlando had a couple really costly ones late. They had three chances where they had uh, an ability to take the lead, and they had two offensive fouls and then a Vucevic top-of-the-key three-pointer at the buzzer that did not drop, so Dallas gets away with that. Uh, Dallas, man, I, I uh, I still have some concerns with this team. They shot 80% at the line, and, you know, 24 of 30, and for 80%, that's a good percentage, but in the clutch, free throws aren't falling. I think Dwight Powell split a – well, maybe Dwight Powell did. I know, obviously, Curry, but uh, someone else missed a key free throw late in that game. That would have been a real chance to extend it. Dallas still a little bit reliant, shot 35% from three. Again, Luka and KP between them didn't shoot it well. Curry, I think, barely played in this game, and so – he, yeah, he was he was cold. I mean, even as he was going to the foul line with a chance to make it a three-point game, 109-106, with about seven seconds left, Followell says, like, yeah, this is his first time in the game since he had, like, five points in the first quarter or something like that. And it was kind of like, oh, damn. Like, we're we're banking on this now then, huh? Let me see here. Let me confirm that. Uh, seven minutes for the game is what he's listed at, five points. Yeah, Curry barely got any burn. And I kind of wondered, I had that sort of, nagging thought like i wonder if he's gonna be a little bit rusty or a little bit 
cold at this point, I should say, coming in for these free throws. You know, you would hope for free throws, maybe not, but uh, I don't know. It, it definitely made an impact in that regard. So Dallas Dallas gets away with it. They, they survive to win. They survive the trap game. That's great. That is great. Dallas 5-2 and two on the season. They will now play the New York Knicks on Friday. There is no Dennis Smith in this game. He's already been uh, out for the game. I think he had a brief uh, step away from the team this past week. Uh, the past few days because of a death in the family. He said something about that on Twitter earlier. Uh, And, you know, that's, you know, family first, deal with that. But all the same, KP's got a big game coming up. There were moments, speaking of this, there were moments in the first half where KP, there's some frustration there, and I don't blame him at all. There was, he had a slow start. But he got a put-back dunk at one point early in the second quarter, about to a little closer to the midway point of the second quarter. And he was, within 30 seconds of that, subbed out of the game. And I don't know if that was the planned time to sub him out and they were just sticking to the schedule or what exactly it was, but what was clear was KP's body language and his expression. He looked like he was pissed off about it. And I don't, I don't blame him. I think he's maybe a little frustrated with his recent struggles and with how Dallas is kind of trying to shield him a little bit. He's been a turnover machine the past three games now, though. I don't know what it is. Really, the Denver game was the first game where he just wasn't very impressive. And then you had the Laker game where he contributed early, but then faded away majorly. You then had the Cavaliers game where he got going late, but it was in the fourth quarter when we were already up big. And he's just padding the lead with Luke on the bench. And now you have this game. And so, yeah, uh, Jonathan Isaac and and Aaron Gordon and them, they, in Vucevic, they gave fits to KP. The Orlando front court did work, no doubt. But I do have some concern because of now a little bit of a trend here. I'm I'm not getting too worked up about it. I'm still looking at it and thinking that, uh, it's very early on. He's got time to work through it, you know, patience and all that. I'm not getting too worked up about it, but there is a modicum of concern there at this point. And I just want to see him be able to work through it. I want to see Dallas try and get him involved early. I wrote about that earlier this week. Apparently that was a divisive article, uh, suggesting that for their duo, Luca and KP to thrive, Dallas should get KP going early in games. And I don't mean force feed him. I don't mean forsake the entire flow of the offense for the sake of getting KP some buckets. I'm saying, you know, you know where his sweet spots are. You know where he likes to operate. Go to him early, two or three possessions in the first five minutes of the game before he checks out for the first time, just to try and get him going. And if you think that's insane, consider what we've done for the last 21 years. Well, I guess you could shave off maybe the last two with Dirk, but Dirk's career, he was the center point of the offense games began and pretty much ran through Dirk early on and then built out from around that that's all I'm saying in that regard not even that KP has to be your focal point just that for a guy whose career has been best suited when he's gotten going early there you go get him going early take a little bit of pressure right out of the gate off the rest of the team I'm off in the wilderness here the point is I wrote that article for Dallas Sports Fanatic this week. Speaking of Dallas Sports Fanatic, as I get tongue-tied over the name Dallas Sports Fanatic, uh, it is not ironclad yet, but the plan is that Saturday, November 16th, when the Raptors come to town, I am actually going to be covering that game for Dallas Sports Fanatic. I will have media credentials to be at the game. I will be in the locker room uh, pre-game and post-game. Uh, I'll get access to... The Mark Cuban media session before the game, the pre-game Rick Carlisle press conference. Uh, of course, post-game, I'll get his press conference again. And then locker room access uh, with some of the guys. And so I should have some video and everything that I can bring out. Some guys talking post-game, just giving kind of context or their thoughts on that game in general when it ends up. So that game is on a Saturday night. I'll probably do a Mavs fast break on Sunday, that Sunday, the next day, uh, to rule that roll that video and everything out so look for that stay tuned that's all my time for this game good god almighty the mavericks stressed me the hell out but you know what 
five and two feels pretty nice. I said if we were sitting 500 uh, through 10 games, that we should be pretty, pretty happy compared to where that was before. And I said the goal should be probably six or seven. You got five of the first seven. And now after this, you got the Knicks. You got the Grizzlies. I think you'll get the Knicks again. I think we get the Knicks again fairly soon. Um, And then you'll have Boston. But the point is, you had a four-game stretch to really get rolling. You're 2-0 through the first parts of that that you should have gotten. Now you got the Knicks, and now you got Memphis, and now you got a chance to build some serious momentum. So until next time, guys, that is my time. Thank you for watching, and remember, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.